Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lindsay and I'm part of the community and marketing team at IOB. And I am Dominique and I am a part of the Leader Success Strategist team. Here at IOB, we are a, crowd, a nonprofit crowdfunding platform and we help community leaders fundraise for community-led projects. That means anyone who has an idea that is for the, that serves the public or is a public benefit is eligible to crowdfund with us. We offer fundraising coaching. That's what my team does very specifically. And that just means that once you submit your idea to us, someone on my team will get back to you. We will help you formulate how to build your campaign page, uh, go over a few strategies and help you through the uh, fundraising process from start to finish. As you can see, our team is working remotely right now um, because of COVID-19. So we hope that you are staying safe as well. Yeah, and we know these times are really difficult. Um, so we just wanted to share a little bit more about our platform because it might be a resource for you during these times. Um, we've already seen some incredible COVID-19 community projects come to life. Um, we've seen community opera performances in Memphis, um, grocery store runs and fundraising for elderly folks. Um, and we've even seen um, portable hand washing stations and book Brooklyn get installed by neighbors. So if you have um, an idea for a COVID-19 pro uh, community project, we'd love to work with you. Um, so first we just wanna share seven types of COVID-19 response projects that are eligible to crowdfund on IOB and also for you to get some inspiration. So I'll list off the seven real quick and then Dominique will share more about each one. Um, the first one is nonprofit organizations. The second is gonna be individuals with lost wages. The third is individuals with medical bills. Number four is medical equipment needs. Number five is restaurants and small businesses. Number six is um, grassroots organization, community togetherness and social, building social connections. And number seven is protecting vulnerable populations. So Dominique, um, can you share more about how a nonprofit organization could use crowdfunding right now as a COVID-19 response project? Yeah, so nonprofits, many of us, we host events in the summer and the spring to, you know, fundraise for our whole year. And a lot of those got canceled. And so some people might be scrounging around for funds or maybe even because they had to reschedule their event, they may have lost some funds due to non-refundable buildings or whatever the case may be. Those are things that you can fundraise for. So replenishing funds, um, canceling a gala, and you need to fundraise regardless for programming, you can fundraise for those things. One thing that is not eligible though, eligible for, for nonprofits, is just using IOB as a donate button. Uh, unfortunately, our platform doesn't have a way to embed into other sites. And so us being a donate button is, is, won't work right now. But if you do want to, like I said, if you do want to fundraise for programming fees or additional supplies or masks or anything for your own organization, you can fundraise for those as a nonprofit. Awesome. Okay, number two. Um, can individuals with lost wages fund, uh, crowdfund on IOB right now? As individuals singularly, no. Um, neither can single families. But if a neighborhood wants to get together and sort of build a tip jar or fundraise for lost wages for service workers, domestic workers, artists, and entertainers that may be out of work, they can. So those are the eligible ways. And just that also brings people together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, singular individuals cannot fundraise for lost wages. Great. Number three, individuals with medical bills. We see this a lot on crowdfunding platforms. Can you share more about that one? So at IOB, because of our fiscal sponsorship being limited, we cannot do single individuals, much like the last example. Um, but if a neighborhood wants to come together to fundraise for several people's medical bills or maybe potentially medical bills for a whole community, that is something that you can fundraise for because of the unexpected bills of COVID-19. Great. Uh, number four is medical equipment needs. I'm sure a lot of people have seen um, in their communities, people are, uh, you know, making masks um, at home uh, and, you know, there could potentially be a fundraising uh, need there. Can you share more about equi medical equipment? Yes. So medical equipment can be anything that um, supports a nonprofit hospital 
about 60% of nonprofit of, of hospitals are nonprofits actually. And so they can uh, fundraise there, but that's 100% eligible. A community group or nonprofit that's fundraising or like the purchase or making equipment. Right now, a lot of people are making masks. A lot of people are making um, scrubs, uh, protective gear, which is something that everyone is sort of in need of. That those are eligible. In terms of what is not eligible in this case is more of like a single individual, like we said last time, or a private business um, wanting to make and purchase those things because that is its own entity. Awesome. Uh, number five is restaurants and small businesses. How could they use IOB to respond to COVID-19? So many restaurants, especially local restaurants, are hurting right now just because they don't have in-service in service, um, service in, in general. And so citywide fundraisers uh, to, to fundraise for, you know, gift cards to buy uh, meals because they can still deliver or pick up. Uh, in fact, I have a project right now that is trying to get together about 250 meals for people that are also working in service or um, lost their wages or whatever. This is a way that restaurants and small businesses can find ways to leverage uh, the platform. Uh, another thing that they can do is for signs or facades or anything like that for their own buildings. Many people, you know, like rent and all this, these different things are affected by COVID-19. So those are ways that restaurants and small businesses can use IOB. Um, a single restaurant though cannot. So it would have to be a group of restaurants together um, on, the, on, the, on the block or whatever the case may be. But a single restaurant technically cannot. Yeah, one of our very first COVID-19 projects that came in on IOB was a community a tip jar in Cleveland for restaurant workers. So yeah. I thought that was a really cool creative idea. Yeah, that's another great way in terms of um, restaurant owners themselves being able to pay those, their workers that may have gotten laid off. Yeah. Okay, number six. Um, there's a lot of grassroots organizers or just neighbors in general who wanna celebrate community togetherness um, and you know amplify social connections while we're practicing social distancing. Yes, um, this is something that I'm really a champion of. I have a lot of projects that are like, how do we fundraise during this time, even though there's so many things going on? We need something to look forward to. We need something to bring people together. And this, these are projects that are like that. So in terms of parades and um, anything that like training um, elderly, you know that like technology is what's saving us, but not everyone has access or knows how to use the technology. So that's something that um, you could pay teachers to teach how to use these for elderly folks. You can also buy supplies for letter writing and video conferencing tools, which are still costly. So just anything like that that brings people together, even maybe potentially an event in the future, um, hopefully when we get out of quarantine soon, those types of things, like those are great things to fundraise for. And then the only thing that you can't fundraise for in terms of like social connection and grassroots is a single family fundraising for something on their own property. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I like the idea too of like forward thinking beyond, um, you know, practicing social distancing. And yeah, sometimes these types of projects and ideas don't require fundraising um, and that's totally fine too. Uh, we just love seeing projects like this come together all the time, whether it's just musicians out on balconies or out on their parking lots, um, sharing music with each other um, or whatever the case. So if you need funding, definitely reach out to us for uh, something that builds community right now. And last but not least is protecting vulnerable populations. Can you share more about that, Dominique? Yes, so many people still have to go to work every day. Um, and, and even still also there are people that are stuck at home and cannot you know, go outside. And so these, these are the type of projects that are potentially like food banks or um, sort of bringing together funds for groceries and medical supplies for people that are stuck inside, um, potentially gas money for people that do have to commute to and from. Those are all ideas that are eligible to fundraise for if a community wants to come together and help, you know, pay for service workers and stuff like that. That is something for essential workers. And then another way is that, but the way that is not eligible is the single individual 
um, who just needs specifically like maybe something from the pharmacy, like those aren't eligible. So again, large groups versus single person. Awesome, thank you. Cool, so those are the seven types of um, projects that uh, you know, maybe you might have an idea that fits into one of those categories as a way to respond to COVID-19 in your community. Um, if it sounds like crowdfunding might be a good tool for you, we would love to work with you. Um, you can learn more if you visit iob.org slash COVID-19. Uh, we also have free resources, an upcoming webinar, um, more project ideas um, to respond to this. Um, so yeah, please reach out and let us know if you, um, you know, need a, your need of a crowdfunding platform or a fiscal sponsorship to move your project forward. Thanks so much and be well and stay healthy.